Hi, I'm Jonathan from EveryPoint, and today I'm going to walk you through the second part of my review of Stipple, a point cloud plugin for Unity 3D. In the first video, if you haven't seen it, you can find it in the links below, but I walked through how to add the plugin to Unity, how to add a point cloud into the scene, and then do some visualization changes, and basically build a scene that we can do different things with. Today, I'm going to go to the standard asset store and I'm going to bring in a first person controller and I'm going to show you how you can walk through this scene. Now, one thing I did find out is that there is no baked in collisions with these point clouds. So we're going to actually have to mock up a way to have collisions so our first person controller doesn't fall through the point cloud. Uh, so we're going to do that by taking the point cloud, bring it into cloud compare, creating a mesh that we can reference in the scene so we don't move through the point cloud and it feels more real. Uh, so follow along. Of course, you can download the point cloud directly from our Sketchfab page. You also find the links in the description below. So try it yourself. You can get a seven day free trial with Stipple as well. And uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're back into the scene we created in the last video here in Unity and we use Stipple to bring in a point cloud and create this nice scene with the visualization. Uh, you have this nice sky sphere around us. Uh, we took the point cloud and did some post-processing effects. So it has a really nice look to it. We have some color grading bloom vignette. And this is great if you want to take some screenshots and do some animated fly-throughs. If you hit the play button here, you show that the camera just gives you this nice view that I had set up but we want to do something a little bit more interactive than that. In this scene, I wanted to walk around in first person as if it's a, a game level, and I wanted to basically gamify this area. And to do that, we need to put in a first person character controller. And you can build one yourself, but I always recommend going the easy route when you're getting going, you're experimenting. And so just go to the asset store, and there is a whole entire standard assets library that you can, you can grab assets from. So if you go to the asset store and you search for your standard assets, you will find that you can add that to your Unity project. And if I go back to Unity and I go to my package manager, you can see the standard assets and I've already imported them. And so you'll, you'll see those down here at the bottom where it says standard assets. If you're in the newer release of Unity, you might see this error in the standard assets. So if you go to console, it's just saying this GUI text is obsolete. So I'm just gonna double tap on that. It's just gonna bring up the script that we need to modify in Visual Studio. And I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly. You just hit enter at the top here and we're gonna add using Unity engine dot UI and then make sure you add a semicolon and if you go down here where it says GUI text we're just going to turn this to text. Now if I save this and go back to Unity you see it's going to recompile that script and if all went well that will go away. So now your simple assets here your standard assets will work. That's something I had to search for uh, it's just with the newest release of Unity uh, so if you run into that, go ahead and fix that. But now if I go to my project, I'll have some more assets and I'll have all these standard assets that I can grab from. And what I want to do is go to the standard assets, characters, first person character, go to the prefabs. And we're just going to take the FPS controller and drop it into the scene. So what this is, is a first person controller. And while, while I'm at it, this has its own camera and everything. I just want to take this main camera and I'm going to delete it out. We don't need that. Um, we did lose the look and feel we had for this, this whole entire scene because it was in a, a profile, but we can, I'll show you how to fix that in a few minutes. So now we have this scene here. We have a first person controller. Again, another, another trick. We want to make sure we have it somewhere where we want to start in the game. Just get your frame oriented where we want. Let's just say right here, hit control shift F. Now it's refocus if I move out of this area, you'll see I'm gonna start looking straight at this. And the cool thing is now I basically have a first person controller for a character that can walk around the scene. So uh, I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna see what's happening after I do that. I hit play, so you can put some first person view and then, oh no, 
we fall through the ground. So that's no good. Let me just jump out of here real quick. The problem is, is that this point cloud has no collisions. So it's basically, uh, it, we just pass right through it. And so we need to actually set those up. And I talked to the creators of Stipple, uh, Light and Shadows, and they said currently they don't have collisions built in. It's not something that they have. So we're going to have to go do a little bit of hacking to create some collisions in this uh, in this scene. And it takes a little bit of work, but I'll show you how to do it. It should only take a few minutes. Um, but one thing I did want to do before we go into that is actually bring back the look and feel of this whole entire scene that we had from our last walkthrough. So if I go to this FPS controller character, I have this nice camera, and I want to just go back and add a component. And you type in post-processing or just start typing it, you'll see the first thing you will always need to add is a post-processing layer. So I'm going to add that. Make sure you change that layer to everything for this example. Again, if you just want this effect to be certain layers, you can always set that up. Okay, then next we're going to want to go to add component and add post-processing volume. We're going to make sure this is global and then pick that profile that we set up in the last video, the main camera profile, and instantly saw the whole scene. It changes it's back to that, that vividness, that dark and light uh, lighting here. This looks a lot more like what we had set up last time. That's exactly what we're looking for. So now, again, we have this nice looking first person look, which we were looking for. So the next thing we want to do is add that mesh, uh, a mesh around this. So you don't fall through the ground. That was not ideal. And to do that, you're going to have to do that in a program called Cloud Compare. It's free. You can get it online. If you've never used it before. But I'm just going to open up this point cloud in, in Cloud Compare. It looks like this. Uh, if, if you're moving around and you notice in Cloud Compare, this is the first time you've used it, uh, every time you move, everything is going to take a little while to re-render. You can easily switch that by going to your settings here and going to decimate clouds over and make sure that just is a really high number. It's over the number of points you have in your screen. I made it 26 million. This is a 25 million point scene. Let me just make it 10 to show you the, the default and what it does. Now, every time I move, it just doesn't show everything. It's not quite what you want. It might take a little bit of time to render. You can see there it is. Just go back, make that higher than you have. We'll make it 26, hit OK, and now it'll just keep everything rendered in the screen and you can move around a little bit easier here. Do know that might have a bit of a performance hit if you do, don't have the newest hardware. So now we have the scene. Um, we need to turn this into a mesh layer because we can use a mesh layer in Unity to add some collisions. That way we won't fall through the ground. So since we're first person and and realistically, we can't jump on top of a building. We actually don't care about a lot of this. So um, make sure you're in orthographic projection view. That way when we're doing any sort of changes to this, we're cutting straight across. But basically, if you just, just take this whole cloud and you look at it sideways, just like this, and zoom out a little bit, and click on it in your DB tree, we're just gonna hit the scissor tool and we're just gonna cut off the top two thirds of this. So Click around like this, you're just going to draw a shape. All that tree canopy is going to go and hit this exclude button so it'll exclude everything that we didn't have selected. Um, and I'm actually a big fan of actually hitting this plus button. What it'll do is makes it into two clouds, but you can turn them on and off and see which one's which. And you can just double check you don't you don't want what you just cut off. So I'm like, okay, that looks that looks good. In fact, I can probably take it down further. So I'm just going to delete this by hitting this X button. We don't need that top half. I'm actually going to go down even further because realistically no one in first person should be going that high. We don't need to build a mesh that tall. So I'm going to go all the way down here like so. Hit the exclude button. I'm pretty confident that looks good. I'm just going to hit the trash can and that'll that'll delete everything. So what I did there is kind of new. Um, just practice a little bit. But it's, it's called segmentation. Use the scissor tool called segment, circle what you what you want or don't want, and then you can include it or, or disclude it. And so now you got this, this really detailed point cloud of kind of the bottom, I don't know, fourth or third of that point cloud. And we're gonna build a mesh around this. So we will be able to run into everything that's in this point cloud. 
And again, we have way more points than we need. If I look in this inspector down here, uh, we still have 14 million points. So we took about 10 million points out of this point cloud. 14 is way more than we want. So I'm going to go to uh, edit and I'm going to subsample this data set. Basically, what I'm going to do is take this and say, turn it to random and say, I only want 1 million points. So if hit one, six zeros, we got a million, and hit OK. And it's going to make a much lighter version of this. Because we're just trying to make a collision mesh. We're not, we're not actually trying to model this to a super high detail. We're just trying to tell Unity, hey, these are some areas you can't go because there's points there. There's a mesh there. So if I zoom in, you'll see that we really lost a lot of the information compared to what we had before. But that's OK. You could probably even go lighter if you wanted to. So I'll just leave it like this. To me, that looks really good. And now I need to turn this into a mesh. So if you have this highlighted, um, we need to go to normals and we need to compute some normals. That basically tells the, the software which direction the pixels are pointed. And I like to make this quadratic for this. Um, pretty much the defaults will be fine. And you can change some other different things, but that's fine. I'll just hit OK and I'll let it run. Depending on how fast your computer is, this might take a while. This might be pretty quick. And if everything turns dark, just like it did, we just need to go to Tools, Edit, Normal, and Invert those normals. OK, and so what that's doing is saying it computed it on backwards. We want to make sure they're computed the right way. So that, that looks good. Everything's light which means they're pointed the right direction. If you were to look inside, everything's kind of dark. So that the light of these pixels are pointed the right direction. So I'm, I'm happy with this. So now we can turn this into a mesh. So you're going to have this segmented, subsampled version selected. And you're going to go to plugins. And you're going to go to the Poisson Recon. And if you had picked one without normals, it'll let you know. Oops, you picked the wrong one. Um, and from here, we can change some parameters. Uh, you want the output density as a scalar field, or SF, checkmarked. I'll show you why in a minute. And then you can change your octet tree depth. That basically tells you how detailed of a mesh it makes. I'm just going to leave it as this default, and I'm going to hit OK. And again, this might take a few minutes for you. It's pretty darn quick on my machine. And now you end up with this, this giant blobby mess that is your point cloud, and you have you have all this stuff on the outside that looks kind of funny. You can opt to actually keep that if you want to kind of contain the character within the view, or you can get rid of it. Um, it really depends on what you're trying to do. I'm actually going to go and remove some of this stuff way up here, and I'm actually going to leave some of this stuff out here so the character can't fall outside of this mesh when they're walking around. If I was to actually remove this too much, um, you could fall out of the scene. So if we go here, uh, down in the properties of this mesh that we just created, you can grab this little dot, and as you slide it to the right, you'll see that your mesh starts to disappear. And so now I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I got most of it gone, and I still have these little walls on the outside. In fact, I'm going to bring that up a little bit, just go backwards. And that's what our mesh is going to look like. And again, I'm leaving these here where they're at because when you walk to the outside of this level, if I was to get rid of these walls, you just fall off. It looks like a giant cliff. You know, you'd fall out in oblivion in the game. And so we're going to do that to kind of contain everything within this. So I'm happy with that. Um, and so we need to basically, again, take this. And we're just, we're just artificially making this look smaller, but we actually need to remove some of it. So I'm just going to select the cloud go to edit, go to scalar fields, and filter by value. And this values here are actually grabbed from what you had just changed in the scene. So hit export. And now you'll see you have this new looking mesh. That's just a generalized shape of everything that you had just worked on. So that looks great. And so now I just want to save this mesh. So if you just highlight it and hit control S or file save, you can save it to your, to your computer somewhere. I'm going to call this forest house mesh. And I'm going to save it as an 
FBX mesh because I know Unity likes that file type. Hit save. I'm just going to pick the FBX binary and it will save it to your computer. So now I can go back to my Unity scene here and I want to add that mesh into the scene. And that's pretty easy. If I go to assets up here, uh, you can just add a new, a new asset or you can drag and drop it in. I'm a big fan of just drag and dropping it in. So I'm just going to go to this folder here. I'm going to find that forest house mesh. I'm just going to pull it in. It's going to load it up in. And now I have this asset. And if I bring it into the scene, you can actually see it's here, but it's really small. So there's this forest house mesh. F it'll actually look at it. Okay, there it is. And it's obviously too small. It's actually not even pointed the right way. So the first thing you want to do is transform it. Let's put it back to zero, zero, zero. And that'll put its origins at the same origin as this house scene. And then uh, I'm going to scale this up 100. I know just the way I'm going to set up, that'll scale appropriately. And I'm not exactly sure why 100 was exactly right, but the way I'd exported things earlier, that did that just fine. And, um, and then I want to change things around. I need to rotate it because it, it has a different X, Y, Z axis than the importer that Stipple uses. So I already know the values. I'm just going to make this one minus 90 and this one 180. And that's going to flip it around. And if I zoom in here, I'm flying closer, it's going to be awfully close. And I can I can make a little bit of adjustments. Um, so if I just grab this and bring it up just slightly, and you can almost see it intersecting with all the, all the different geometry here. Uh, as my son said, this looks like I brought snow in. Uh, we obviously don't want people to see this. And again, you can kind of see the banks at the side that are going to keep the character in. Um, and there's some weird things over here. I'm not going to worry about it. Hopefully my character can make it under here. Um, so we'll just, we'll just go with that. That looks pretty good to me. Um, because we don't want people to see it, we're going to hit uncheck the mesh renderer. So it's in the scene, but it's not actually rendering the material. So it's basically invisible. And then we have to go add a component and we're going to hit mesh collider. And what that does is it turns it into a, basically a, a collision field for the, the computer. So we can, we can see all this geometry what we would run into if we were to walk around. So that's it. So let's see what happens if I hit play now. So if I hit play, it's going to drop us in the scene. And I'm not sure if this is going to pick up the sounds or not, the way I'm recording the screenshot, but you can hear footsteps. You can walk around. And let's see if I can get through here. Oh, yeah, I can get I can get through here. But I can walk to the back door, and I can't walk in. That's what I want. I didn't fall through the floor. Let's see if I get through here. Uh, I'm going to try to walk out of the game level. Yep, it's keeping me in. Normally, I would just kind of fall out. Try to get around all these. And I might as well do a full full walk around and see what happens here. So I'm gonna walk around to the back side. The whole shift kind of sprints you around just like in a first person game. So that worked out pretty well. Let's see if I can run right off. Yep, see now it keeps me in. Um, so there we go. We've created ourselves a first person controller scene. You you got this really tall jump. You can jump up kind of on the roof because we did have a little bit of roof on here. I could probably even get up on some of the trees. Um, just depends on how how much mesh you wanted to add into here if I click out so I can see my mouse here um, I can turn on that mesh render a little bit uh, see here and this gives you kind of some context of what we're jumping on so there it is I guess if you like this you could do a snow scene uh, and just kind of pop out uh, but there it is we're running into things and you can see that bloom almost catching on all that white, almost looks like snow. And see, we can't we can't walk out. So if I was to undo the mesh render, you'll see it looks like a drop off, but again, we can't fall off. And that's it. Pretty simple. So we have this beautiful scene. You can run around, and from here, it's just your imagination. You can uh, you could add other characters in here. You could. You know, add other sorts of physics, uh, have fun with it. You can explore it for an experience to showcase some sort of um, real world site that you want to show off that you've that you've scanned for a client, something like that. 
Um, but pretty simple to add collisions here, and now I can navigate through it. And again, they said they'll add collisions natively into Stipple, but this is just an easy way to do it today. Um, and I suggest you guys try it yourself. Again, share in the comments. If you guys make one yourself, make a video of it, share it in the comments of this, of this video. I'd love to see someone else what they've made. Um, and just look out for the next video. I'm gonna take this one step further. I'm gonna attempt making this in VR and see, see how we can teleport around. And again, the collisions will help because I can teleport to the top of the building and I can look all around, get all kinds of context. And so be looking out for that. I hope you have that done here soon. Um, but again, let me know how you, what you guys think and be sure you follow this because I'll have a few more videos on what we can do with Stipple. I'll also be testing Stipple on a variety of different hardware. And this this point cloud has 25 million points. I do have some uh, over a billion point, point clouds that we'll also try. And I like to try on some various hardware just to see how it stacks up. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.